Hey everyone, um, it is Ultra Healthy here. Hi, how are you? Um, so Violet Wisteria has been out, you know, for a week now. Um, some people have had the chance to play it. And uh, if, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen that I've been posting hints, kind of like, you know, just little tips here and there about kind of some things you might not realize about the game, you know, just strategies for getting better. Um, and... You know, I've, I've kind of wanted to do, I don't know, uh, not a strategy guide exactly, but I just wanted to expand on that kind of and give people some help for, you know, those who are enjoying the game. Uh, but obviously, you know, find it very challenging, which it is. Uh, so it is it is hard, you know, it takes some time to get used to, but it's not impossible by any means. Uh, so I'm going to do some kind of strategy guide videos, I guess we would call them, about how to uh, get through... The various levels of Violet Wisteria. We're starting out with stage 1 and 2. This is basically where the demo would take you up to. And we're going to just assume that you, you're playing for the very first time. Uh, so let's get straight to it. So the very first thing you need to do before you start the game, you've got to go to the options. This is absolutely vital for enjoying Violet Wisteria. Uh, first we got three difficulty settings. Practice gives you five lives per continue and infinite continues. But you can't see the ending of the game. You cannot play the last stage or get to the ending. You will, it will end after stage 7, giving you a prompt screen saying, please try some of the other difficulty settings. Hyper Easy is the default, and it gives you 3 lives per continue and 5 continues. Uh, if, you, if you beat the game on this setting, you will be able to see the regular ending in full. Uh, Ultra Hard gives you 2 lives and 2 continues, and there are some other differences. Um, but... But this, uh, if you if you meet certain criteria, you can get the the kind of special ending, a hard mode. Um, color hints. So as it says at the bottom of the screen, it it shows an icon above each enemy um, to show what color they're weak against. This game is based on colors, sort of similar to Rock Scissors Paper. It's gonna all make more sense when we get into the game. Um, for now, I will leave them off, but I will show you how they work uh, later on because we can we can toggle that in game as well. This is probably the most important part, um, the control type. So this game has a very sort of, you know, peculiar sort of method of attacking how, how it's input. So the controls are not completely customizable. There are three options. Um, you can use the D-pad to specify which color attack you're using uh, by combining it with the attack button. The shoulder option allows you to use the shoulder buttons instead of the D-pad to specify which color you're attacking with. The face option um, will put the three colors onto the, the top three buttons, the top three face buttons if you're using an, an Xbox style controller, that should be X, Y, and B. And that moves magic up to R1 or the right bumper. Um, a lot of people seem to prefer this one. Um, I have always enjoyed using the D-pad, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and that's all you really need to change for now. Uh, so we're going to play on the default hyper easy, uh, and I'm using the D-pad setup. So let's get into it. So this is basically just for, you know, how to play the game itself. We're going to skip the story sequences. All right. The game starts out inside the palace, and this is effectively a tutorial. Uh, so we have these, these signs here. So this tells us to use the blue slash, or the blue attack, to defeat white enemies. Uh, white is also sometimes grayish. Uh, so hold up and press attack to execute the blue slash. So I'm holding up, uh, and I'm pressing attack, and it gives me blue. And blue is strong against white, so we defeat the white enemies with blue. Use the white slash to defeat red enemies. Hold left or right, or press the D-pad neutral. So basically, if you're pressing to the side, or not pressing the D-pad at all, you'll get white and white defeats red enemies. So as you can see, all enemies appear as palette swaps. Um, most of the time randomly, except for certain spots. Hold down and press jump to slide. Basic enough, uh, clearly stolen from Valis. <laughs> so then finally, red defeats blue enemies. So we hold down and attack to, to beat red enemies, uh, blue enemies, just like this. Boom. So if you forget the color order, you can pause, and it shows you right here. It's blue, white, red, blue. Blue attacks beat white enemies, white attacks beat red enemies, and red attacks beat blue enemies. Um, it's nothing, nothing 
intuitive or natural about it. Uh, it's something you're just going to have to learn. It takes some time initially, uh, but there are some things that will help you out. So this guy's red. We're going to skip him for a moment. So as you can see, we cannot jump over this, but we do have a text box here. Use the same color slash to bound off an enemy. So this guy is red, and if we hold down, then we can get the red attack. So if you attack an enemy with the same color, you get reflected in the opposite direction. Uh, it works horizontally, and it also works vertically, and as you'll see here. You can also bounce off colored blocks. All right, so this is just a sort of rubber block. Um, it's just a block. It's not an enemy, so we can touch it safely. Uh, but if you attack it, it will act like an enemy if you use the same color. So you'll get reflected off of it like this. So if you attack from above, you get reflected upwards. It also works from the side normally. Uh, and if you start pressing jump just after you've uh, bounced, uh, you will get more height, as you can see like this. Um, so I'm going to give you a really big hint here right from the beginning. Um, right now in the early stages, we're going to have these blocks here um, for bouncing upwards. There are going to be parts later in the game where you need to reflect off of enemies below to bounce upwards. Now, of course, if you miss the timing, you're going to crash straight into the enemy and take damage, right? Uh, it takes time to learn. The good news is we've got this sort of, you know, these things for practice. So you should, even if you can technically stand on it safely, you should practice jumping into the bounce like this. You should jump attack and then bounce because also you can just keep pressing the jump button. Um, and get more height like that. You don't have to do this kind of, you know, very quick transition from down attack and then start pressing jump. Uh, so I really suggest doing that right from the beginning. Item boxes, okay. Simple enough. Also clearly stolen from Valis. And this game has magic. Um, so we press the R trigger, R2, to cycle through magic. Uh, the colors are the same, the rules are the same. So there's three types of magic, blue, white, red. Um, blue, white, red, and, and the order is the same. Uh, so there's no MP in this game. Using magic takes away from your time limit. Right now we're inside the, uh, the tutorial room, so the time is infinity. But once we go outside, there's going to be a time limit, just like the good old days. Uh, so it's 15 seconds per use, and it's, it's pretty lenient, you'll find, actually. You can use it quite a few times. Uh, so this guy's white, so we kill him with blue. So let's try using magic to kill him. Okay. So all of the magics have their own kind of trajectory. Um, blue is good for enemies above you. Uh, white is the laser and it, you know, can, can get multiple enemies if they're lined up. Uh, and then red has a good, good spread, but it only kills one enemy at a time. All right. So you may have noticed the color of the crystals at the top of the display were changing. Um, this happens when I'm pressing the D-pad. Uh, maybe hopefully you can see here. Uh, so. This will explain how that works. So the color in the center shows the attack you're going to use. So if I'm holding up, it turns blue because I'm going to attack with blue. If I don't touch anything, it's white, because if I press attack then, it'll be white. The color next to it is the enemy color that you will kill with that color attack. So right, I attack with white, and white beats red. And then the color on the outside shows the enemies you can't attack. Uh, with your color. So even if you attack an enemy with white, a blue enemy, nothing will happen. Uh, on easy mode, it will just pass straight through them. Uh, on ultra hard mode, you will take damage if you attack an enemy with the wrong color. Uh, that was the original plan for this game. This turned out to be a little challenging, so I, I set hyper easy to default. Uh, but, but that was how I initially intended for the game to be played. Um, so as you can see, it will change when I when I press the D-pad. And finally, you can turn color hints on or off uh, from the pause screen. So you can have them on or off anytime you want. I've had them off. Uh, we're going to turn them on and see what happens. So now you can see enemies have a little icon above them, and that tells you what color to use to defeat them. Right? He had a blue sword, so I know to use the blue attack. Uh, this guy is red, so it tells us, okay, white beats red. So, just like that. Uh, and the, the, the factory default, actually, uh, of the game is that it's going to have the color hints on. And you're probably going to want to have them on the first time that you play. It is quite tricky to learn initially. Um, personally, for me, they just get in the way. So I'm going to turn them off and play the game. All right. So basically, uh, we're out here in the game now. 
So let's let's just get into it here. Right. So it's probably going to look a little easier than it actually is uh, because I've I know the colors very well, you know, and uh, it's going to take time, you know, for most people. So this is a power-up item. It allows you to kill any color enemy with any color attack. Uh, it also works for magic. Uh, but you are not invincible. <laughs> so don't just start running into enemies when you pick it up. Sorry. <laughs> I know that's very sneaky of me. Um, but uh, yeah, you, I'll show you. So you can just kill any, any color enemy with any color attack. It's really convenient. Just... A few seconds of, you know, just a feeling of power running through your, through your, uh, through your veins. Um, so I'm going to tell you something very important about this game. So, you know, I'm just, just kind of playing normal. Um, there is no coyote time in Violet Wisteria. Coyote time is uh, also called a jump buffer by some people. So you'll find in most modern um, 2D action games, when you run off of a ledge... Uh, usually the developer will give you two or three frames of time, or however much time they choose, uh, where you can still jump, even if you've accidentally gone completely off the platform. You cannot do that in Violet Wisteria, and I'll show you. See, I, I, I press the button, and it, you might almost think that I'm, I'm still on the platform, but actually my character's um, hitbox has gone completely off of it. So you're going to have to actually learn to jump <clears throat> probably just a little earlier uh, than you're expecting. It's going to take a little bit of practice. I see a lot of people not getting that initially and they think there's something wrong with their controller. Um, but there is not. There is just no coyote time at all in this game. And there are very few situations where, you know, there's this, you know, edge of your seat, super close jumps you know, that your pixel perfect kind of things. There's not very many of them. Um, so that's why I made the game this way, basically. Um, so you cannot cross this, this gap with a regular jump. You need to use uh, the same color attack. Now, a lot of people are going to kill kill this little gargoyle and wait for the, the ram. You actually don't have to. You can slide under him. Uh, and, and and just bounce straight across. Same thing with this guy. Most people, when they first play it, they're going to kill those guys and wait for the rams to come. Uh, if you want to eventually learn to speedrun this game, you don't have to wait for them. Uh, that's why those enemies are there. <laughs> now we've got these clocks, of course. These hands um, do have hitboxes, so you'll take damage if you run into them. Since you guys who are watching this video are so cool, I'm going to give away one of the big secrets in this game. There are hidden item boxes. There are invisible item boxes, just like Valis 3. Yes, I've stole everything from Valis. And one of them, blam, is right here, and it's a 1-up. You should definitely get that, because <laughs> it's a tough game. So a lot of people have trouble with this guy. So when the axe is down, you can't attack him. You can only attack the Minotaurs when they are attacking. So, as you see, we gave him one piece of damage and they have two hit points. When he stops animating, that means he's going to jump, and that's when you attack. Um, so we have a blue block here, and it works just the same. Your, your, your attack does come down uh, below your feet, so uh, you, you can actually bounce off blue things as well in this game. But the timing is very different. Um, the red attack basically, it you know, hits immediately the second you start attacking. The blue attack, the hitbox does not come down below your feet for a couple frames, right, until the, the sword animation actually comes down. So it takes a little bit of practice to get the blue right. Um, it's going to take some time and that's okay. But you will again need to use that in some later parts of the game. Hopefully I'm explaining everything important here. Not very good at talking and gaming at the same time. Um, so I am going to tell you something really cool about these guys. A lot of people have trouble with the Minotaur at first. There is a magical distance at which you can damage them and they can't damage you. And it just happens to be exactly two, uh, two map chips. That's what we call them in Japanese. Sorry, what they call them in English. Um, what do they call these things? We call them map chips in Japanese. They're called, um, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, tiles in English. So it's exactly two tiles, so you're going to see, I can hit this guy, and he can't hit me from this distance. See, I'm totally safe. So that's a big tip that's going to help out a lot of people um, who have trouble with the Minotaur. Alright, so here we have our first boss. Um, this side is white, so we need to attack with blue. This side is blue, so we need to attack with red. Um, so the enemies that come out from the sides are always the same color. So basically, if you're facing left in here, you should always attack red. If you're facing to the right, you should always attack blue. I think I have like six or seven hit points each one. Ow. <laughs> so once you've killed one side, they'll shoot lasers on occasion. Okay, so after you get him, he's going to transform into the final the final phase, uh, which is red. So now we need to change our attack to white. And now the enemies coming out will always be red. So you can just use white once this guy appears, and you're good to go. Here's a real trick. You can actually damage him twice per uh, per phase if you get him when he comes down and then he's he's on the ground and then you you can actually attack again when he's on the way up and you can get two hits um, with each each bounce I guess you would say but we killed him really quick so that is that let's get to stage two right we're in the wormhole so, so we've got these guys these are big enemies and they also take two hits uh, so you hit him once and then they're gonna snap back at you uh, these guys move back and forth erratically, and they will shoot on occasion. Oops. We've got a uh, power-up up here. So there is kind of these quicksand jelly platforms in this stage that you'll sink. Uh, and if you're deep in it, you can only gump, come up just a little bit. If you're near the top, you can jump normally. I think it's two or three pixels away from the top. Uh... So yeah, you're going to have to learn kind of how to jump just at the moment you've landed on these things so that you don't start sinking, basically is, is the trick to it. Whoa. All right, so now he's got these amoebas. Um, they'll continue to come on the screen. They're generated more or less indefinitely, but you'll only get up to two at once. Um, so if you see two and they're both behind you, you might as well just keep running forward. <laughs> All right, now we're going to have some acid dropping from the top. You can keep attacking. Jumping when you're attacking, I mean, it's fine. This guy's sneaky right here. Wait, okay. New kind of enemies. These guys just kind of stand here, but they will attack every few seconds. Uh oh. I think I'm just gonna hit you with that and get you out of my way. The magic uh, is sort of just, you know, it's it's for if you feel like you know you're in a jam or if something just seems like it's in a kind of hard to get place and you're maybe low on life or something. Um, you know, I don't use it too often. And yes, you can slide under these. It's the only way you can get past them. Without taking damage. Alright. As I said, you'll only get two of those on screen at once. So, there's a big gap here. A um, couple ways we could do this. I think we're gonna... Ow, do, do it that way. So we actually have a mid-boss here. Some people have a little problem with this. So you don't need to kill uh, the guy himself, you just kill his little uh, projectiles. If you get, t I think he has 10 hit points. So if you hit him 10 times, whoopsie. And he's done. And hey, we get an extra life after that, isn't that nice? You also get extra life for points uh, after 50,000 initially, and every 70,000 after that. Oops. So yeah, here's one of these blue things. So you're going to see the timing is a lot different um, for when you need to start attacking to get your attack hitbox to come below your player's feet. 
Um, there is actually... Oh, Jesus. Wow. See, it's a pretty forgiving um, kickback, you know, when you take damage. And actually, there was a, there was a secret health increase over there that I wanted, but I took damage. So there's no difference. It meant nothing. It was a damn waste of time. Got to use him to bounce across. A little bit of vertical platforming here. You got to really get get used to. Uh oh. Wait. Wait. Okay. Got you. Gee, all right. Missed that. Thankfully, it's not a. Thankfully, it's not a death pl death pit below there. We have to kind of come down underneath this guy and then bounce off him. Now we're getting towards the end. I've never played a game for this long and spoke at the same time. It's, it's very difficult for me. Um, so, anyways. Whew, that could have been dangerous if I accidentally used the wrong color. Just about the end here. Okay, when you have the power up, uh, you'll do two two points of damage instead of one. So the bigger guys you can kill. And there's actually a secret secret life item right there. So we're on boss two. Um, so we've got three worms and they all have different colors. So you got to kill them one at a time. This guy's red, so we're gonna hit him with white. Uh, and I'll give you a nice cool secret about this red worm. His hitbox is across his entire body, um, so you can hit him on his chest, on his face, wherever you want. Now he's done for. Uh, so now a lot of people have trouble with this guy. Uh, he just shoots these things off randomly. Uh, you're, you're just going to have to squeeze between them like this. Uh, get out of the way, I suggest, when, when the lasers come. It can be done. It just takes a little bit of... A little bit of focus. And now this guy's gonna transform, and we're gonna hit him with red. You gotta slide under if you need to get to the other side. And like that. And you know, really, at this point, we could just easily use up our magic. I mean, we've got two, over 200 seconds. It's plenty of time. Alright, there you go. He's done. He's good to go. Uh, and that is it. So we have gotten through the first two stages of Violet Wisteria. Uh, I'm not going to give that away, so that's stage three. <laughs> I'll pause there. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, coming and checking out this video. Hopefully if it watched, you watched it, it means that you know, you're interested in the game. You'd, you'd like to try to get further, uh, but you know, you're finding that it is quite challenging, and yes it is. Uh, but it's also really rewarding you know, once you take some time and, and get used to that color system. Uh, so that is it for volume one of this. Um, hope you go ahead and try out the game uh, again if you've if you've bought it or if you haven't bought it yet, go and try and pick it up. Uh, it's it's a really cool game. You know if you can uh, get it past that initial learning curve. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining me again, and hopefully next time we'll be putting up a video about how to get through stages three and four. Take care for now.